Let us join together in praise and worship. Welcome all on this Sunday as we join with all corners of the world for those who are here and those who are tuning in online. We welcome you this day as we join together and use the words of Psalm 34 to call ourselves into worship. Let us prepare our hearts and minds. I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let us exalt the Holy One's name together. I sought the Lord, and the Lord is magnified with me. Look to the Lord, and know that our soul may cry out and be heart by the Lord. The angel of the Lord encamps around us. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And let it be known that refuge is found in our Creator. Let us rise in body or spirit for Him. Number 522, Lord, when I came into this life.
set our sights on God and God alone, we join it together to affirm our faith as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed printed in the bulletin. Let us join together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord hears when we reach out and call upon Him in our times of need and when we share what is on our deepest hearts and minds. Therefore, we dare to go before God and ask that He hears us when we beg for forgiveness that we recognize we don't deserve. So we go, placing faith in the gracious gift that God gives each of us, the gift of grace, mercy, and forgiveness, as we join together in our statement of confession from Psalm 130. Let us join it together. O God of compassion, if you kept a record of our sins, who could stand? We come before you with our brokenness and our wounds for all to see. We bring our anger, our bitterness, our unwholesome talk, and our deceitfulness. We try to do good, but sometimes fail. We choose to do evil and sometimes succeed. Come to us, O oh God. Forgive our doubts and fears. Heal our brokenness, that we may rejoice in your steadfast love. Keep your promise to forgive us when we confess to you completely, as we seek to accept your gift of grace. The good news of the gospel is we do not have to seek long and hard for the gift of grace. For God's gift is from everlasting to everlasting, and that gift is always there for us to grasp and take hold of. I encourage you to take hold of the gift of grace this day, as you know that you are forgiven, and that peace may reign in your hearts. Amen.
turn ourselves to the way that God is working within us and amongst us as we look at the life and work of the church. You can see the announcements in the bulletin insert and if there is any who wish to lift up joys or concerns or announcements for the body, I invite you to stand and do so. I would like to add Heath Stover to the prayer list. He is um, the son of a friend of mine from high school. Uh, who was stung by a bee and of course went into anaphylactic shock and then also cardiac arrest and so he's in the hospital so your prayers would be appreciated and if I could ask that his his wedding day was supposed to be yesterday yes and the parents as I said from high school was, was the father and then the mother was uh, Kathy's friend from high school <coughs> Thank you. We will definitely keep all of them in our prayers and Heath as he seeks to recover. You can also see what else is occurring in the life and work of the church. You can see that the newsletters and upper rooms are available at this time and that Sunday afternoon Bible study will be 4 to 5 p.m. today. There's also opportunities to join in working with the church, and those uh, sign-ups can be found in the fellowship hall for coffee hour, the community steak dinner, which I want to remind everyone is this coming Friday, and help with the car show in October. Also want to make known that the kids' Sunday school classes will start back next Sunday and to make sure to mark your calendar for Sunday September 8th we will be packing Pre Presbyterian disaster assistance supplies that includes 50 uh, clean out buckets those buckets go to areas affected by hurricanes and floods particularly to help muck out different houses basements all of that that is what those go for and then we will be packing a hundred period packs, which is what we have packed before. Those are hygiene products for those in need of those supplies. I also want to offer a thanks to the congregation from Amber Gallahan. She wishes to thank everyone for the reception that was held here in celebration and memory of Dottie Clatterbuck last week. Also, you can see who we are celebrating and keeping on our hearts and minds this day. We wish happy birthdays to Roger Aiken on the 15th and a happy anniversary to Tom and Kim Nixon also on the 15th this coming week. You can see who is on our prayer list this day, including the addition of Heath Stover as he is working on recovery in the hospital and I also would like to highlight that we offer up prayers of comfort for all of those participating in our grief share ministry. We had a specific request this past week that we keep all of them in our hearts and minds. So with all of these folks, we go to God in prayer now. I invite you to join me. God of all that is known and unknown, we come to you this day so that you may find us in the midst of our wilderness, that you will guide us safely to the place that you intend us to go, that your path will be made known in our hearts and minds, and that we may be able to follow what you have taught and where you lead. You call for us to lie down and you call for us to get up. You offer us bread and drink in times of need. And this we ask of you. More often than not, we come asking you for more and more and more. Show us through those who are around us that you have offered a lot. 
May we recognize the blessings that are around us and the people who reflect your love and mercy in the wind that blows your spirit among us in the nature that you have created to sustain us. God, this day when we despair for the future of our country, of our world, and we despair for who the neighbors may be or what they may have done, may peace come and fill our hearts so that we recognize one another as children of God so that warring and hatred and anger and bitterness may cease in our hearts and that your love and tenderness may rule in our mind so that everything we do and say may reflect you that we may imitate God to the best of our abilities and show the world the love of Christ in all that we do and all that we say so that we may recognize that we are yours. And as many of yours have joined together, so too do we join together this day, praying that which Christ taught his disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to lift up your tithes, your offerings, and your lives before God this day. Let us lift them up. Ushers. God of all things, we lift up these gifts to you, that they may be seen as gifts and used as such for your ministry and your mission, and may it provide for those who it needs. In your holy name, amen. I invite you to join in singing hymn number 203, God of mercy, God of grace.
You may be seated. And I invite you to turn to God in prayer with me once more. Let us pray. God, this morning we ask that you do not energize us. We ask rather that you grant us the gift of your peace and rest and that we may recognize it as holy as your spirit comes and fills this place in these words as they are read and proclaimed so that they may speak to us this day your message. Amen. First scripture reading comes from the first book of Kings chapter 19 verses 2 through 8. Listen to the prophet's story. Then Queen Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them, the prophets of Baal, who have died by this time tomorrow. Then Elijah was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake, baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, or the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank, and then he went in strength of that, 40, that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture reading comes from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, chapter 4, verses 25 through chapter 5, verse 2. Listen as Paul writes. So then, putting away a falsehood, let each of you speak the truth with your neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not make room for the devil. Those who steal must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor, doing good work with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is good for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with the seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God and Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as you are beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Prior to our first king's reading, Elijah goes to King Ahab with a prophecy of drought. This prophecy is one from God, but it's also aimed at the prophets of Baal. See, Baal was supposed to control fertility and rain, and when the drought occurred as prophesied, it signaled that God knew best. And in the following chapter, Elijah again went to King Ahab and challenged him and all of the prophets of Baal to choose a sacrifice. 
and to call on their God to bring fire to burn the bull offering. It was to see which God was more real. Elijah would do the same. And calling on Yahweh, the whole offering was burned up, water and all. It's a story you may know well. Yahweh had proved himself in the midst of the contest by consuming the offering and following the challenge, Elijah would have the people seize the prophets of Baal and then killed. Ahab then went to Queen or went to Jezreel as his summer where his summer home was and where his wife Jezebel was living. He would tell of what had occurred. In the background of the prophecies and challenge is the desire by Ahab and Jezebel to kill all of the prophets of God. Therefore, the death threat that Elijah receives at the start of our scripture reading is a very real threat to his life. This leads to him fleeing to the wilderness, a hearkening back to the Exodus story of the people of God fleeing from Egypt to the wilderness in hope and faith of escaping death. Elijah is fleeing as far as possible as he flees to Beersheba. It's a hundred miles away from Ahab and Jezebel, and it's the furthest he can get while staying in the promised land. Yet we find the prophet still in despair in the midst of the wilderness as he asks God that he might die. It's enough. God, it is enough. Take away my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. In this request, we catch a rare glimpse into the thoughts of a major biblical figure. Elijah's morbid thoughts parallel those other Hebrew prophets who sit under a bush. Jonah sits and wishes that he might die following the completion of his duties in Nineveh. Moses, too, asks God to end his life after a conflict with the people. We could also see Elijah's words here alluding to Job who suffers great loss and wishes that he would simply die. All of these folks have something in common in the fact that they were depressed about the future of their lives. They saw no good outcomes in the days to come. These folks were in great despair. And we find Elijah hurting. He's probably shuffling out into the wilderness, grumbling under his breath, cursing the circumstances he's found himself in. He's angry at the state of the world, at having to put up with certain people, angry that he has to deal with those who won't listen, so he calls out for death. I like to picture in my head God watching Elijah and, and nodding his understanding. He's not looking to brush aside the cry, but give space for such a statement to be made and heard and, and taken seriously. God knows what's weighing on Elijah's heart and mind. God knows the anger and the fear and the bitterness. And rather than bringing down fire from on high or splitting rocks on the mountaintop, God sends a nap. God sends rest to Elijah. The prophet is simply able to lay down and nap. Everything in his mind is quieted. And he lays down under the broom tree and sleeps. And there's a ministry that I got to participate in called the Nap Ministry. And the notion behind Nap Ministry is basically pausing the stresses and strains of life to allow yourself to rest and to reset so that you may face the challenges of the day with renewed energy and imagination. This ministry operated in about 90-minute sessions, and if I'm remembering correctly, the time was spent with quiet poetry and scriptures being read to remind the participants that rest is indeed a holy activity and a God-provided thing. 
I draw you back to one of the Ten Commandments in which we're told to remember the Sabbath, a gift of rest from God and to keep it holy. So what does that mean for us? We look to the Scripture and we see that the first nap is interrupted by the angel of the Lord. But not in an interruption to chastise Elijah for resting when there was so much to be done. He isn't woken up to be told that his life is still in danger and the weight of the world to come crashing back down or that he has to get his quota in to God about how many people he had prophesied to and saved. No, he is woken up by a messenger of God to remind Elijah, you need to eat. Get up, eat. And Elijah looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate, and he drank, and he laid back down. This scene repeats a second time, and the angel of the Lord reminds Elijah that his rest and the meals provided are needed so that he can continue to do his work, to continue to move on in his life. Here's a nap and a little food. And Paul seems to recognize the gift of rest and how it can set you up for success. Don't let the sun set on your anger. Or in another way, perhaps one of the most given recommendations to newlyweds, don't go to bed angry at one another. Anger lets in the devil, according to Paul's writings. And giving a whole night to your anger makes even more space for it. Therefore, we find ourselves in need of a rest, in need of a reset, a nap, and maybe a piece of cake. A nap that allows you to face life with a refreshed mind, allowing each of us to put away falsehood and to speak truth with our neighbors, to keep from making room in our hearts and minds for the devil when we become angry and bitter. Becoming refreshed gives us the energy for doing good work with our hands so that we don't have to resort to stealing. And that good work of our hands allows us to share with the needy. A nap can keep the evil talk from coming out of our mouths so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And it can help you and keep you from grief causing grievance to the Holy Spirit of God. Giving ourselves space to rest can keep away all that bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander and malice so that we may be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God and Christ has forgiven you. So therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us. Be imitators of God. On the seventh day, God rested. In the midst of a storm, Jesus slept. If you want to sit here and tell me that you are bigger or better than a God who takes His rest... Well, I'll let you take that up with the higher power than myself. God rests. Jesus rests. So too do you need rest. And Christian communities are meant to be a living demonstration before the world of what new life in Christ looks like. A life in which rest is acceptable. Yet worldwide, Christian communities face off sponsoring dramatically opposed visions of what it means to live in a Christian way. What would happen if we deliberately embraced the Spirit-inspired practices that Paul offers us? Or we accept the gift of rest and recovery that Elijah depicts for us? What does that look like? for your life. 
internationally known scholar, author, author, activist, and theologian Abraham Joshua Heschel wrote a book titled The Sabbath. It's one of my personal favorites, and in this book he discusses the gift that is the Sabbath and by extension the rest that God provides for people. He writes, the Sabbath is the most precious present mankind has received from the treasure house of God. All week we think the Spirit is, is too far away and we succumb to believing in spiritual absence. Or at best we pray, just send me a little bit of thy Spirit. On the Sabbath, the Spirit stands and pleads with us, accept all excellence from me. Yet what the Spirit offers is often too grand for our trivial minds. We accept ease and release and miss the inspiration of the day, where it comes from and what it stands for. This is why we pray for understanding. May thy children realize and understand that their rest comes from thee, and that to rest means to sanctify thy name. Rest comes from the Lord. And in this rest, we are able to put aside that which divides us, for it can truly be a unifying practice to put away the falsehoods of the news cycle, to e extinguish the anger in our hearts, to let the depression of life fall from our shoulders as we all take the time to rest, to nap to embody the love and lived life of Christ in which we do and say that we have faith. And that includes taking time to sleep in the midst of the literal and metaphorical storms of life. The rest and the two meals that go to Elijah, they strengthen him to continue for 40 days and nights. And rest and a meal can do the same for each of us to give us the strength to get back out into the world so that we may live in a way that imitates God to the best of our abilities. On the days that we simply wish life would pass away due to whatever is burdening us, lay down in a place. Lay down in a place that offers you peace from heat and hardships of the world and simply fall asleep. And when that first nap isn't quite enough, get up. Eat a piece of cake. And if the need remains, sleep again. And eat again. So that when you are refreshed, your journey may continue as you're called to trek through life. And you're called to trek through life putting away all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander and all malice. So to be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving of one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you, so that you may be imitators of God. Imitators of a God who rests on the seventh day. Of who allows His prophet to take a nap under a broom tree, who offers cake for a weary body and a tired mind, and whose son comes and shows us that resting, even in the midst of storms, is okay. As we are beloved children and we walk in love as Christ loves us. And so I pray for all that may thy children realize and understand that their rest comes from Thee, O God, and that to rest means to sanctify Thy name. May it be so. I invite you to rise in body and spirit as we respond to God's Word with Him, number 536, Lord, make us more holy.
faithful, patient, loving, holy. All of these things can be achieved with a nap. So go out this day with permission to imitate God, to rest as your body needs it. For it is a holy, a faithful, a patient, and a loving practice to yourself and to those around you as you go out with joy and are led forth in peace as the mountains and the hills burst before you into song and the trees of the field clap their hands. Go in peace.